I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design. Today I'm out by the old factory. Uh, now this morning Beth came out. Uh, the humidity is acceptable, around 50. And uh, we've got, we're changing all the doors upstairs in the bedrooms. Uh, I think it's five doors all together to the solid core, real heavy ones. And But they have to be painted first. So whenever the weather's been good, she's been bringing them out, uh, putting two coats on one side, flipping them over and two coats on the other side. Now it has to set a few days in between coats so it's a fairly long job and she just uh, just painted one more this morning. So let's take a quick look at that. There we go. Now these doors are solid core and amazingly they weigh like 75 pounds each. They are hugely heavy and when you go to close them you have to be a little bit careful that you don't slam them because they are just so heavy. And we've got some real nice expensive uh, locks and hardware to go with them, uh, door latches. So they're going to be pretty nice. The girls really enjoy nice stuff like that. And on the bedrooms, it'll be nice. I'm even going to put one on my bedroom. Now, uh, let me put this back so you can see me. Now she finished that for the day. That's got to dry before she flips it over. And now she's upstairs painting uh, my door frame to my bedroom. Inside and out. The room needs to be sheetrocked. And I may have Dwight not sheetrocked. It needs to be uh, mudded out. All the joints need to be done. That it needs to be painted. The windows need to be framed. And I may do that this winter when Dwight gets a little slow on work. And maybe not. No rush. Now, I'm doing a painting project out here uh, for Sue. Uh, let's go out and take a quick look at that. Now, for you guys that have been following this, uh, probably a week or so ago, Sue picked this cooler up on the dump. Uh, it, the paint was all messed up on it. It had some rust on it. But uh, it was in very good condition. There was nothing really wrong with it other than it needed a coat of paint. And it's like a 1940s cooler. Uh, and the inside of it, instead of being aluminum, it's galvanized uh, with fiberglass insulation in it. Just a cool old piece. Got a, got a nice old-fashioned look to it. So, she brought it home and she sanded on this thing for days and days and days. She finally got it to the point where we thought it was paintable. Uh, so I just painted it. So let's get a close-up look at that. And I just painted the top antique white and then uh, red. What color red? Let's see. Dual paint primer, banner red. And that's red. Oh yeah, should be pretty. Now, the guy that supplies my wood called me yesterday and said probably this weekend he's going to deliver four cord of wood. So, uh... I'm going to have him dump it out by the factory, uh, and we're going to let it sit there until it cools down. Once it gets cool enough, uh, start having frost at night, we're going to take what's left of the wood on the left-hand side of the uh, wood shed, the partial piles, and put those down cellar, and then put the green wood that I'm having delivered on that left-hand side. So I'll have four cord of green wood on the left-hand side, and four cord of very well-seasoned wood on the right-hand side, and another couple cord down solid. But uh, we drive right through the woodshed and turn it onto a woods road and come back and make a loop. It makes it much easier. And <laughs> the woods road has grown up. So Sue went out uh, today, this afternoon, uh, with her clippers. She's got a real set, a nice set of Fisca clippers. And uh, she swamped that road all out and cut all the brush there so that we can get through with a garden tractor. Now this morning uh, I went out to the factory and went to work and Beth brought me out a list. A very short list, very easy day. We only had a couple orders. The two orders came to I don't know, under $100, like 80 bucks. So it was a pretty easy day. And then I set out to uh, building Sawyer's adapters. I built 16 of those. So let's go, let's 
excuse me. Let's go up to the factory and take a look at that. And no, my tomatoes aren't ripe yet, but they're working on it. This sunny day is helping. It won't be too long before we have tomatoes. Now it's kind of hard to believe that I worked all morning. Uh, I'm just not going to come out. I worked all morning to make uh, 16 of these. But uh, they're very repetitious because they're basically a mirror image of themselves. There's threads and a seal, and then you turn them over, and there's threads and a seal. So I have to thread 32. I have to cut threads 32 times to cut 16 of them. Uh, and then 32 seals, 32 grooves, and I have to break the edges, and I have to bore them. It's, a, it's, it's like making 32 uh, nipple caps. <laughs> only, you only get 16 when you get done. Uh, but, uh, done. Now the rest of the day is mine. It's fairly warm out right now. I'm going to say it's close to 80. Uh, but the sun just went behind a cloud, so I think this is a good time for me to put on my bike shorts and go crank out to 10 miles on my recumbent uh, two-wheeler. I've been riding that, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've already been to the dump, and I got... Um, only thing I got to the dump this time was a little shot glass. And this actually is a shot glass, because it says uh, Calvert right on it. Load Loaded Canadian Calvert, I think. I'm not a drinker, so I don't know. But it's a nice little shot glass. It's even got a halfway mark on it. Uh, so, <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm not a drinker. I think that mark is, is for something else. But maybe that's where a shot stopped. But I'm, I'm thinking probably the shots... Hmm, you guys would know. I wouldn't know. I never drank a shot of hard liquor or beer or anything in my life. But it does have a line on there for something. You guys will know. So, somebody will tell me. But anyway... Uh, nice little uh, shot glass goes up in my window with my uh, other two pieces of glass now I have one other one up here that nobody knew what it was I think I know what it is this piece is very old you can see that it was hand rolled it's really ununiform I think I'm not sure about this but I think uh, does anybody know what a salt cellar is okay a salt cellar, uh, it used to be in the old days, they didn't have salt shakers. They just put the salt on the table in a, in a glass, fairly flat-sided glass bowl with a glass lid, no seal on it. Filled that full of salt. Uh, now, what you did was, if you were eating at a high-class establishment, they gave you a, one of these, a little feller, and sat beside you, played along with all your flatware and your, and your dishes and everything. And what you did was you went over to the salt cellar, the big one, scooped up some salt and put it in here. Then as you were eating your meal, if you wanted salt, you reached in with your fingers, I know, uh, and took it out and rolled your fingers in and sprinkled it on your food. So I think this is an individual salt cellar, which is part of a set of maybe six or eight with one big salt cellar uh, that matches it. That's what I'm going to guess that is, but... Uh, that's that's just really cool. That's probably you know at least a hundred years old, and it survived. Probably the only one left, but it did survive. I'm Kenny from Mini Bowl Design. Get out and hike. Take a friend. Enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, try to have some fun today, and try to have a really great day. Bye bye.
Hey, Zeke. 